The Republic of Texas was an ephemeral empire. Like spring bluebonnets, it bloomed, blossomed, and blanched with the sands of time. But also like the state flower, its scent lingers in the hearts and imaginations of contemporary Texans. A distinct history produces a distinct culture. A distinctive culture produces a distinctive people. Texans express pride in their forebears. The past, as novelist William Faulkner reflected, is never dead. It's not even past. In Texas, that is especially true. In the Lone Star State, not only is the past never dead, it lives vibrantly. But more than any other epoch, the Revolutionary and Republic periods shaped what some have termed Texas exceptionalism. In the United States, the Panic of 1819 devastated many frontier families. Reports that Texas had lowered barriers to American settlers seemed a godsend for poor folk seeking a place to start over. The Mexican government was so open-handed that newcomers could hardly believe their good fortune. Indigents who had arrived in Texas poor as Job's turkey built spreads ten times larger than those back in the old states. We've all heard it. Everything's bigger in Texas. The enormity of Mexican land grants was likely the source of this popular adage. It may be a myth, but the state is still larger than France. Even so, the bigger in Texas cliche misses the point. It's not the size of their ranches or Cadillac or Stetson hats or belt buckles that define Texans. It is the size of their dreams. Texas provided scope for ambitious visionaries. The Richard Kings, the Charlie Goodnights, the Clint Murchison, the H. Ross Perot's, the Mary Kay Ashes, the Red McCombs, dreamers and schemers who savored the doing more than the payoff. What proved impossible elsewhere became feasible west of the Sabine River. That spirit remains firmly entrenched. The Texas Republic was born in the blood of rebellion. From the beginning, cultures clashed at this crossroads of empire. Some came to settle, others to slaughter. Mayhem and carnage rendered the region one enormous battlefield. Thus, a warrior myth embedded itself in the public imagination. But are Texans really more aggressive than others? Perhaps so. Given their history, how could they be otherwise? Yet, theirs is rarely the mindless violence of the thug, terrorist, or psychopath. Texans pack the ranks of the National Armed Forces, and military installations dot the landscape. The Lone Star has always produced and honored fighting sons and daughters. Early Texians fought to live by their own lights, to plot their own course. That trait continues to burn in their descendants. Texans, having witnessed what individuals breathing the fresh air of freedom can attain, bristle under restraint. Their tendency to strike an independent course, to observe their own customs, annoys foreigners. Potentates and politicians living in remote capitals, bureaucrats who knew nothing of conditions in Texas, have always tried to foist one-size-fits-all policies suited for places with milder climes for persons of more yielding dispositions. They never worked. They never will. Texas and Texans are simply too different from those other places and those other people. Texans celebrate their history and the unique culture it forged. 
There is integrity in tradition, value in the verdict of experience, of lives lived and principles cherished. It does not venerate the ashes, it feeds the flames. And Texans heat multiple irons in that fire. Explain to the heirs of William Barrett Travis, Jim Bowie, and Juan Seguin that compliance is a virtue, submission but another form of patriotism. Texans have spent enough time in cattle pens to recognize this notion for what it is, and their mamas taught them to scrape it off their boots before they came into the house. Ultimately, identity remains the best argument for Texas exceptionalism. It's just this simple. If a people decide that they're different, they are. Many vestiges of the revolution and republic remain to remind Texans of that difference. Each year, roughly three million people from all over the world visit the Alamo, the state's number one tourist attraction. The huge number of foreign visitors serves as proof that the 1836 battle is not merely a Texas tale. The love of liberty, veneration of courage, and defiance of tyranny is the birthright of all free men and women. The church's battered facade is among the world's most iconic images. It is far and away the state's most famous building. While vacationing in northern England, my wife and I toured the Flodden Battlefield, the site of the decisive 1513 victory of the Earl of Surrey over an invading Scots army under King James IV. It was a breezy, rainy day, and we had the place virtually to ourselves. I say virtually because an elderly English couple were the only other people silly enough to be out in such nasty weather. They represented an earlier generation of Englishmen, all tweed and tea time. They might have been characters from an Agatha Christie mystery. We introduced ourselves, and recognizing our accents, they asked us which of the states we were from. Texas, I said. The wife beamed. Ah, yes, that's the Alamo, isn't it? Yes, I assured her, that's us. There's no escaping it. Even if we sometime wish to forget it, the rest of the world will always remember the Alamo. The old 300, come and take it, the Alamo, San Jacinto, the horse marines, Plum Creek, all have become global metaphors that transcend mere history. John Steinbeck insisted, The word Texas becomes a symbol to everyone in the world. There's no question that this Texas of the mind fable is often synthetic, sometimes untruthful and frequently romantic, but that in no way diminishes its strength as a symbol. Who can deny that this emblematic Texas is firmly rooted in the quarter century between 1821 and 1846. It was the Lone Star State's heroic age. Steinbeck said it best. Texas is a state of mind. Texas is an obsession. Above all, Texas is a nation in every sense of the word. Even today, it is common to hear natives of the state claim that they are Texans first, Americans second. The degree of Texas nationalism is a question for debate, but it is perhaps significant that the citizens of the Texas Republic refuse to forsake their cherished flag. To this day, the emblem of a sovereign nation continues to swell over the forest, hills, and prairies of this extraordinary place.